Hello everyone, it's Paul with TutorU, and today we're going to be going over dot plots, box plots, and histograms. I dare you to say that 10 times really fast. The main idea behind these statistical diagrams is that it's a quick and easy way of organizing your data that makes it easier to understand the bigger picture of what's happening. I guarantee you're going to run into at least one question on the GED that includes these statistical diagrams. That's why I want to go through them just to help you out. I know that my setup isn't the fanciest, but if you like this content and if you want me to keep doing it, please help my channel grow, like this video, comment down below if this helped you, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. But let's get into these examples of all of these statistical diagrams and I'll try to break it down in an easier way to understand. Here we have our first example of a dot plot. Notice that it's on a number line of 1 through 10 and there are green dots above different values on that number line. The total number of green dots above that number line represents how many of those points are in your data set. When we read the statement above the dot plot, we have a better understanding of what's happening with this statistical diagram. It says a class of 33 students takes a 10 point quiz. The following dot plot represents the distribution of students' scores. What that means is that each one of these green dots represents a student that took the quiz. This one person on three scored a 30% on this quiz. The two people on 10 scored 100% on this quiz. One thing I would like for you to make a mental note of with this statistical diagram and the paragraph above is that there are 33 students involved. That means that we have 33 data points. Why is that number 33 important on a statistical diagram? It means that we have an odd number of data points. When you have an odd number of data points, it's a lot easier to find your median number. If you don't know what the median is, I'll put a link above so you can watch one of my prior videos where I covered the topic of medians. To put it simply, the median is the middle number. So what is the middle number out of 33? You have 16 on one side and 16 on the other. So your middle number is number 17. If we were to go through and count each one of these green dots, we would find that the 17th data point is lucky number eight. So we'll put a circle around that just so you have that mental note down. Before we move on to box plots, I just want to put this statistical diagram in most simple terms. Each one of these numbers on the number line is an area in your data. The green dots above the numbers are how many points you have of that data point, right? So at number five, we have two data points of number five. At number six, we have four data points of number six and so on. So let's move on to box plots. Here we have our first example of a box plot. Always remember to read the titles of any charts that you're given when you're taking the GED. Our box plot is titled student scores. We're referencing the data in the dot plot we just covered. That means that we're using the same data in the dot plot for this box plot. Let me go through and label each part of this box plot so we have a better understanding of what's happening and we can go through and define each component so you have a better understanding. I know it looks like a lot, but I promise you once we go through each component, it's not going to be too bad. At the very top, we have our maximum value in our data set. If you remember the dot plot from before, the maximum value was 10. So that's why that line is at 10. As we move down our labels, we have quartile 3, quartile 2, quartile 1, and I promise we'll get back to it, but the minimum value is down at the bottom. The minimum value in the dot plot before was three. So that's why we have our line at three. Now I wanna talk about quartile two, also known as the median. If you remember from earlier on in the video when we were talking about dot plots, the median is the middle number in your data set. Here we have a line drawn at eight. That means that our median number of this box plot is eight. Now I know what you might be thinking with the words quartile. Paul, this sounds like a totally different language and I'm never going to understand these things. But I promise you, understanding quartiles is a lot easier than what you think and I totally believe that you can understand what they are. The easiest way to understand these box plots is through the word median. Here we have our median at quartile two. So quartile two is always the median of your data set. Quartile three is another way of saying the median of the top half of your data set. And quartile one is another way of saying the median of the bottom half of your data set. So to put it simply, the box plot is a group of medians. 
you have your median of the entire data set, your median of the top half of your data set, also known as quartile three, and the median of the bottom half of your data set, also known as quartile one. The other important numbers that you need to have to make your box plot, it is the very top number, the maximum, and the very bottom number, the minimum. One thing that we can do to help increase your understanding of box plots is work through an example of one together. At this time, before we work through this example, I want to ask you to hit the like button. If this is helping you understand any of this stuff, please like, comment, and subscribe. It greatly benefits my channel and we can help more people by growing this channel. So let's go through and label each part of this new box plot. We have our new maximum number, the very top line of the box plot, and that is at 12. So the maximum number of this data set is 12. Moving down from the maximum of 12, we run into the beginnings of our box. Remember, the top line of your box is the median of the top half of your data, also known as quartile 3. Here, it looks like quartile three can be found at nine. As we continue to move down our box plot, remember the next line down is going to be our median number or our middle number of our data set. It looks like that line inside of the box is at the point of seven. So the median of our entire data set is seven. Moving just a little bit farther down, we run into quartile one. Quartile one is the median of the bottom half of our data set, and it looks like our data point for that is going to be 6.5, or right in the middle of seven and six. Lastly, we move down to the lowest point of our box plot, and if you remember, the lowest point of your box plot is your minimum value of the data set. It looks like the line that's, that's the, at the lowest point of our box plot is drawn at four. So we know that the lowest value in that data set is four. Now I know these box plots can be confusing, but I promise if you go back, rewatch that part of the video, take some notes, take some screenshots, take some mental notes, you'll have a better understanding of how these box plots operate and it'll just go a lot better for you. However, we're gonna be moving on to the last one of our statistical diagrams that we're, we're talking about, and that is histograms. And they are a lot nicer than box plots. Here we have our last example of a statistical diagram. This is a histogram. The big thing to remember with histograms is that they have bars that have lengths that are associated to scales. What do I mean by being associated to scales? Look on the left side of this diagram. There's age ranges associated with each bar. So there's an age range for the top bar, which is 12 to 17, an age range for the next bar, 18 to 34, the next bar, 35 to 49, and the last bar, 50 to 64. And apparently in my diagram that I made up, nobody exists over the age of 64. So whoops, I messed up. However, we can still use this, it's totally fine. This histogram is comparing age groups with the millions of viewers of the ratings of Carl's cartoon. That's why it's always important to read your titles. It gives you a picture of what's happening. So there was a new cartoon that was released and these are the ratings for each specific age group. It's best to use a histogram when you need to have scales of ages, such as the ones that we have over here. It's very nice to use these. It gives you a good picture of what's happening. Uh, if I were to ask you, what is a pattern you can identify in this histogram? What might you say? Would you say that this TV show was popular amongst all age groups? Absolutely not. Would you say that this TV show is popular with those above the age of 50 and teenagers? No, what you would say is that this age group is dominantly popular in the age group of 18 to 34 year olds. That's the whole idea behind these histograms. It gives you a collective idea of what's going on with age groups or with a scale of something. So I hope this video helped you. If it did, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, comment down below. If you're working on your GED or any type of tests like that, let me know. It would be awesome to know that you're using my videos to help you learn. 
Otherwise, I hope you have a beautiful day. I appreciate you.